tervetuloa tänne hikisen kuumaan Helsinkiin Hakaneemeen mun kotiin. Ja tuossa muutama kuukausi sitten oltiin tosiaan tuolla Islannissa Space Nationin kanssa ja muun muassa Gregory Vox Johnsonin kanssa tekemässä tämmöistä astronautreenin programmia. Ja tota, nyt meillä on nyt tuossa tällä hetkellä Gregi täällä langan päässä. Ää, Hello Greg! Can you... Say hi. Hey, how are you? Doing? Good to see you again. Very good to see you. We we really did have fun. Very good time there. A lot lot more hot right now here. And by the way, uh, a good evening from Finland, Hakaniemi. It's very hot. It's like 30 de uh, degrees plus Celsius here. Um, where are you, by the way? Uh, should I say good morning or evening or? You can say good morning. It's uh, it's a little bit before lunchtime here. I mean, Houston, Texas. It's also very hot here. It's 98 degrees outside in Fahrenheit, uh, which is around uh, 35 or so, 30 or 35. I, I don't usually do math in public, uh, but it's pretty. It's pretty warm um, in uh, Houston as well. I, 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 I can tell you're a little bit hot. I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating. Yeah, I'm sweating here. <laughs> but yeah, let's go. Um, we can go to the interview now. So uh, we have prepared with Finnish anthropologists and anthropologists a couple of questions about like uh, space exploration and uh, space anthropology and such. And uh, let's start about uh, about you. So I understood you have been to space several locations. Uh, how many times actually, uh, and what did you do there? Okay, so I flew twice in space. My first flight was about ten years ago. Um, went up for two weeks, 14, 16 days, and my job was to pilot the space shuttle to the International Space Station during the period of time when NASA and the world was building the International Space Station. So I was I spent two weeks on the space station, uh, but most of my job was helping to build the space station. I operated robotic arms uh, to move uh, pieces around, and other people did space box. And then as the pilot, I was sort of the maid, the butler, um, the cook uh, and the engineer uh, kind of taking care of the shuttle and just serving um, the entire team. So my second shuttle flight uh, was in 2011, STS-134. That was the final space shuttle flight endeavor. So I flew space shuttle endeavor twice, and both missions were about the same length of time, about 16 days. So I've spent a total of about 30, 32 days uh, living in space. Uh, most of that on, on the space station or attached to the space station. Oh, that's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, so I remember something like the 31 days, but yeah, 32 days. That, that's a long, long time. I'm rounding up. Yeah, rounding up. <laughs> rounding up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so basically, let's go to space anthropology then. Uh, Subjects and let's see. Have you actually worked with uh, NASA's anthropologists? Uh, and if so, have you found their expertise meaningful in some ways? Okay, so uh, the answer is probably, okay? Okay, yeah. Um, but not, at, not as a function of talking about space anthropology, because that wasn't my line of expertise. Yeah. Um, I really very much, um, if you think about uh, cultures and the evolution of cultures and colonization and those sorts of discussions, they are being had um, in, in uh, hypothetical circles and scientific circles and probably in some planning circles, I imagine, at this point. But I'm not privy to many of those discussions other than just uh, I'm an interested citizen and I'm an, uh, you know, uh, uh, a crew member of Spaceship Earth yeah. uh, interested in discussions. So I would say that I'm interested in this in this field, even though I'm not an expert and I haven't really had uh, professional discussions with any of these people, at, at least uh, that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh... All right, let's go to the second topic, uh, and this this is a more more political one, perhaps. Uh, so basically, the topic goes exploration or conquest. So, do you actually feel that the space exploration is more about actual exploration or the conquest of space? Well, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's both. Yeah. Um, if you think about the exploration that we did in ships, 
centuries ago. Um, I mean, we're curious human beings, and we want to learn what's you know over the next hill or over the next horizon, and so and that's how we learn. And then sometimes we find that there's nothing fruitful over that next bridge, right? And 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 then we abandon that and we go somewhere else. Sometimes there's great opportunity or possibilities in the in the things that we explore. Um, yeah. And and we do that in all walks of life. And so space exploration is no different than that. It's uh, we, uh, we we're finding out about our world. We're we're learning things uh, or, or our universe. We're finding out about our universe, but we're also learning things about our planet and ourselves as well. Um, and so uh, I think that when you talk about space anthropology, it's really about both. It's about exploring and understanding, but it probably will lead to colonization. I think that's that, that's going to happen at some point. Okay, very interesting. Uh even when actually this uh, colonization and the human race actually goes to space, do you, do you think that we would bring our um, earthly power structures and nationalistic ideas with us? Well, I think the, the answer is um, that would be our natural tendency because that's what we know. Yes. Um, if you think about what happened with Christopher Columbus and all the explorers, or Leif Erikson, whoever, whoever we want to attribute to those initial outsiders who went to the New World, um, they brought their ideas, they brought their cultures with them, and of course they clashed with some of the cultures of the Native Americans who had been inhabiting the, uh, the lands for, you know, thousands of years. And so we will probably do that. I think we should be aware of that. And when we go to these new places in the future, we, sh we should be um, receptive to the other ideas and cultures and thoughts of the um, indigenous uh, life forms, wherever they might be. Oh, yeah. yeah. So basically, to summarize, would it be fair to say that it would be a new form of a coloni colon colonialism, perhaps? Well, I think from the, from the colonization perspective piece, I mean, the exploration piece, not so much, right? Yeah. I mean, we're just learning about what's out there. But when we start thinking about colonizing Mars, for example, or the moon, or some other, you know, maybe some near-Earth asteroid, um, uh, it, it will definitely be a, um, a melding of cultures if we find other life forms. Uh, we certainly are not going to want to upset those cultures. That, that will not be our intention, at least with my, you know, my Pollyanna view of life is I would think that we would go there, we've learned that lesson before, and so I think we would go there with an open mind yeah. and try not conquest. I think, I think we're more mature as a civilization uh, to just conquest and, and completely take ownership of whatever we find. That is true, and I wish, I wish uh, that really will be the case. <laughs> so I, I think I, I think that we intellectually have have progressed. We become more diversified around the world. We're not we're still not perfect there yet. We're more understanding of other cultures. That is true. Um, and I think and I think as we mature intellectually and culturally, I think that um, we'll have an opportunity to demonstrate that maturity. Uh, should we colonize um, some other location in the solar system or outside of the solar system? That is true, and we do have the technology with, uh, which supports this. Uh, well, this is a prime example. I'm here in Helsinki, and you're there in Arizona, <laughs> and we have our conversation about this. So, I think yes. we are going in the right direction here.